This makes that I am so oh, yeah. Thank you. All right, I'd like to introduce Kimberly Gapier, Seven Steps to Becoming a Full Time Blogger. Kimberly is a local dog nutrition blogger and author of A Novice Guide to Raw Feeding for Dogs. She writes about feeding her four dogs and cat, diet of fresh food, and has one of the lead blogs in the nation. Now she is months away from becoming a full time blogger, and she's going to share with you how, what she did to get there. Put your hand together for you. that you're going to walk out of here and be ready to go full time in a week or two. It took me years, so it's going to take me years too, damn it. Um, <laughs> but um, what I do want to say is that there's no magic deal. What works for me may work for you, it may not work for you. I am going to tell you what to do once you start feeling like you are ready to go full time. And this could be a year from now or two years from now. I honestly wish I would have started doing these things years ago because then I would be prepared today. So, this is what I needed to do to get here. I had to narrow my blog's focus. So, Keep the Tail Wagging was started in 2011, December 24, 2011 to be exact. Um, I was complaining about those ASPCA commercials. They're driving me absolutely crazy. My boyfriend, being the most sarcastic person on the planet, told me, well, why don't you go blog about it? And then I said, because maybe I will, because that's how we communicate in our house. And um, so I went and I started a blog. I actually had already been working on Keep the Tail Wagging and getting it going. But then I was just like, yep, I'm, this is it. This is the, the, the purpose of Keep the Tail Wagging is to tell a happy story. And I was going to tell about how I'm raising litter mates and they're so happy and healthy and blah, 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 blah. Mostly, people were tired of me talking about my puppies. It's been two years, they weren't puppies anymore. And people were like, we were tired of looking at pictures, we we're tired of hearing, just looking at videos of them barking. And so I figure I'll have a blog and I will just talk about it there. A few years later, after years of my dog staying sick and going in and out of the vet's office, I was introduced to raw meat, which is basically, yeah, feeding my dogs raw meat. That's a real basic explanation of what I feed my dogs, but that's the way I do. And um, I switched my dog to a raw food diet. Within two weeks, most of his health issues vanished. And I was just like, wow. I continued learning, and over that next year, it was so hard to figure out raw feeding. People were mean and judgmental. And I figured if I was having a hard time learning about raw feeding, I bet other people would be too. Plus, one of my followers said, hey, Kimberly, would you mind talking about that raw feeding that you're doing? And I decided, you know what, that's what I'm going to do with my blog. I'm switching it to a raw blog. What I didn't realize was that I was one of the only people on the planet writing about raw feeding. So I fell into a niche that turned into a big deal. I got very lucky. So I always tell people, if you want to turn your blog into something that will support you full time, you've got to narrow your focus. You can't be a fashion blogger. You need to narrow that focus into an audience and you know that you're going to get that particular audience coming back to your blog over and over again. And you're not competing with all the huge fashion blogs out there. So when I was just a pet blogger, I was competing with thousands and thousands of blogs out there, not to mention Petco and PetSmart and all of these sites as well. But when I narrowed it down to raw feeding for dogs, I practically had zero competition. So I was able to dominate really quickly. So know that the money is in the list. I don't know if you guys have heard this, but I heard it all throughout my blogging career. The money is in the list. You gotta start collecting those emails. And I was of the belief that, oh, I get so tired of people emailing me. I don't want to be that person that's spamming people with my emails. They'll just come and read a blog post if they want to read it. That was wrong. I should have been collecting emails all along. I did it off and on here and there, but I didn't really have a purpose for it. I was just collecting emails and not really emailing anyone because I didn't know what to do with it. Well, guess what? The money is in the list. I now have a marketing consultant that I use that helps me set up my marketing funnels 
and I use my list to make money. It is very important. We'll talk a little bit about that later on. And then finally, you need to understand and be able to analyze your traffic. That is so important. It's so easy to sit there and put the Google Analytics on our site. Never go and look at it and try to understand what's coming, what's happening, what sites people or blog posts people are visiting, how long they're staying on your site. It may not seem like a big deal. You may be intimidated because it's like, I don't really understand it. You gotta get over it. It's important, and that's one of those things that you're gonna be able to use that information to leverage your business so that you are continually making money and it's not just like a one-off thing here and there. So that is the secret to get to where I am today. Now what we're going to talk about is what I should have been doing all along as well. In this session, I want you guys to feel free to raise your hand and answer a question. I will repeat the question so we can make sure we get it on the recording or you can go to that microphone and ask a question and I'm going to try and make this quick so that we can um, have a question and answer session at the end. Also, these slides are going to be available at keepthetailwagging.com backslash WCSEA2018. They're uploaded right now. If you go to the WordCamp website and go to my session, those were my slides that I just turned in really quickly to meet the deadline. And that's not what this is. <laughs> so, Oprah Winfrey is my idol, so I had to put something about her in here. Um, so, the first thing, you want to create a plan. I'm going to let that sit there. I'm actually not going to read that to you because you guys can read on your own, but what I am going to tell you is that I have a list. When I started realizing that I might be able to do this full time, I knew that I needed to create a plan because I have a partner, Johan. He is my best friend and um, he was not comfortable with me saying, hey, I'm going to blog full time. I'm done. I'm quitting my job tomorrow. Because he was just sort of like, okay, so what about benefits? What about the retirement plan? What if something goes wrong? And those are the things that I didn't even think about. I was so excited about the fact that I was finally making money. So what I did is I took a step back and decided, what, how much money am I going to need to replace my day job? And that includes not only taxes, but also benefits, and then my 401k. I'm going to have to take all of that on for myself. And then I'm going to need to maybe not double that dollar amount, but at least get a little bit more than that. Because I want to be able to put away money for savings. I want to be able to have a little nest egg. I want to start saving money to be prepared for that. So that's what I did. I looked at the calendar. I chose a date on the calendar. The date is actually probably like in a week or so. That date has now since moved out another six months because I'm not quite ready yet. But I have a date on the calendar now. It's June 30th, 2019. And what I'm going to do between now and then, and what I have been doing, is paying off debt. So I'm not going to be able to pay off the house. I'm not doing that well. But I'm going to pay off as much debt as possible. And I'm also going to save up six months' worth of income. So that if anything goes weird or wonky, I have a nest egg. I also need to spend this next six months talking to someone about an investment account. I need to get the benefits down. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get the benefits down, so I might have to work a part-time job just to have benefits. But those are the type of things that I'm figuring out right now. So if you are thinking of using a blog <coughs> as your full-time income, start making a plan now. Start really thinking these ways, because you do not want to be in a place where you didn't think about this, and then all of a sudden you're hit with the fact that to get just basic benefits is going to cost you six to seven hundred dollars a month, and those aren't really great benefits. And so, those are the type of things you don't want to be shocked about. That know your worth. Too often, I get emails from bloggers who are telling me that, oh my gosh, someone's going to pay me to do name it, and they tell me they're so excited, they're going to pay me fifty dollars, and it's just sort of like, what exactly is fifty dollars going to cover in your life? If you were doing this full time, what is that $50 going to cover? For me, it will cover a third of my cell phone bill. It's nothing. So know your worth. Actually take the time and understand how much are bloggers in your niche getting paid. If you don't know bloggers who are open up about their finances that you can ask, I mean, I personally am very uncomfortable talking about money. So if my friends ask me, I'll tell them. But if a stranger comes and asks me how much I get paid blogging, I'm probably going to hem and haw and just be like, enough. But, you know, find someone that you trust that can 
tell you how much they're making. If you can't find that person, reach out to brands and see how much they're willing to pay. Find someone you know where you can start learning these things because you're going to need to use that to figure out what your hourly rate is. On the other side, figure out what your hour, hourly rate is. Look at all the bills that you have to cover and then boil that down to how much do you need to make an hour or a day or a week or a month to cover all of those bills and then meet in the middle so you can figure out how much you need to charge. So one of the things that um, I'm noticing a lot of bloggers doing is that they're taking things for free. They're, accept they're thinking, oh, well, I'm going to do this work for exposure. That is a lie. There is no exposure. Um, or they're basically billing 50% of what they're worth. One thing I found is that if I say, oh, this is, I charge 300 for that. If a brand tells me, oh, okay, where do I pay? Then I know I just shorted myself. And so the next time, I'm going to charge $600 for it. And believe it or not, I know it's scary, and I'm going to say something to the ladies in the audience. Sometimes we tend to be like, oh, I don't want to make someone mad. I'm uncomfortable. No. You set your rates. You do not let a stranger who doesn't know anything about your business set your rates. I finally recognize that I get over 200,000 people visiting my blog in a month. I have worked hard over the past few years to build an audience of people. I have over 20,000 likes on Facebook. And to me, that's nothing. I mean, I, should, I feel like I should have over 50,000 likes because I'm awesome like that. But that's something that I work for. I am not going to allow a stranger to knock on my door and ask me to promote their products to my audience that I worked hard to build for $50 or for $300. I'm going to charge them an insane amount of money. And if they don't want to pay for it, then they can know. I'm okay with that. But I'm not going to allow someone to stand on my shoulders and access my audience for free or for cheap. And that's hard to get used to, but you got to start doing it because if this is going to be your full-time business, if this is how you pay bills, you can't afford to be giving away your time or your services for free or for cheap. Diversify your income. A few months ago, I woke up, I think it was a Saturday or Sunday morning, and I had the shock of my life. A shock, I don't often have meltdowns anymore. I used to always have a meltdown. I, I went to my blog and all of a sudden I got the white screen to death, I'd have a meltdown. I mean, if, I, if something didn't work, if I felt like, if I couldn't figure something out, I had a meltdown. I hated my website, I hated my computer, everything was hard, how am I work, why am I doing this stupid blogging thing, it's frustrating. But then I figured everything out, everything clicked, and I kind of calmed down, and it was like, you know, I'm going all right. But a couple months ago, I had a complete, utter, I was laying on the floor, like, oh my god, this sucks, type of meltdown. And the reason why is because I got an email from Amazon.com telling me, hey, guess what? We're kicking you out of the affiliate program because you're not following the rules. I was like, what? Oh my god! Amazon affiliate was probably about a quarter of my income. That is about $2,000 a month that I just lost. And not only that, when Amazon kicks you out of the program, because they pay you like, what, 30 to 60 days later, all the money that I had accrued, gone. I lost over $3,000 that day. And yeah, damn right, that's exactly it. I was worse, I was screaming, yes. Why did they kick you out? I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> When you go to Amazon, and if you have a product that you're promoting, you cannot do screenshots of the products on Amazon. Why? Because they don't always own the images. So you can't take another brand's images and put them on your website. That is a no-duh type of mistake that I made. I was stupid. Another thing you can't do is you can't screenshot reviews. So if you're trying to convince your followers that, hey, everyone loves this, you just got to tell them everyone loves it. Go over to Amazon and look at it. You cannot screenshot reviews. They have certain ways in which you can put images on your website. I just don't like the way it looks. So I was just doing a screenshot. It was a stupid, stupid rookie mistake. I should have known better. But in their email, they said, hey, we emailed you three weeks ago and told you to get this fixed. And since you didn't fix it, we're kicking you out. I never got that email. And so I called them and said, I never got an email. And they were like, well, let's look into this. And then I got an email probably a couple days later. It was four days total where they said, sorry about that, we reinstated you, 
and I fixed everything that they saw. And then I had a great conversation with the Amazon affiliate people, which I thought were impossible to reach. They were awesome and got everything fixed on my site, and now everything's good. But from that lesson, I learned, one, when you join an affiliate program, you gotta read those documents. And if you don't understand it, if you don't feel like reading it, you need to find someone to get on the phone and have them explain it to you. And so now, whenever I join a new affiliate program, I ask them about, one, link loading. You can't cloak links for Amazon. I've never done that, but well, that's a lie. I did it years ago, but someone warned me about it, and so I stopped doing that. So what I mean by link cloaking is that if there is a cloaking, if there is a product that I promote all the time, it's just easier for me to say keep the tailwagon.com backslash product. I can't do that with an affiliate program. They want to be as transparent as possible. Another thing that you can't do is um, you can't use your mailing list with some of the affiliate programs to promote affiliate links. So if you join MailChimp, if you join Aweber, make sure you understand what you can use that mailing list for and what you can't use it for. There's just a lot of rules, and so I learned from that, understand the rules. I got all my money back, so I was happy, but I learned that I don't want to be without a day job and find out that one part of my income drops away and it's gone forever. Because I was told that if you get on the bad side of Amazon, you were done. There was no recourse. There is a recourse. You just got to be lucky enough to get someone on the phone. And I got lucky. So, I meant to do this. This is how I monetize my blog. I have affiliate marketing, and for those of you guys who don't know, that just basically means if you buy something through a link on my site, I might get a commission for it. I have display advertising. A lot of people don't want to do display advertising because they don't want people to come to their site and be inundated with ads. I got over that. That is a big money maker. And 80% of my traffic is organic traffic. These people are used to going to sites with ads on them. It's okay. I have sponsored posts and sponsorships. Yes, they are different. A sponsored post is a one-time post, at least on my blog it is. A sponsorship is over a period of time. I will not allow anyone to sign up for a sponsorship on my blog for less than six months. It's just not worth my time. So it's six months or 12 months or it's nothing at all. I do, um, I create products right here. I have a book. I'm writing my second book right now. This was crazy easy to write. It started out as a series of blog posts. Then I downloaded it into a Word document, cleaned it up, added some chapters, and then published it on Amazon.com. It took me about six months to do this. You know, just off and on working on it. Then I also offer a service. You can offer consulting, coaching, speaking. I do workshops on Ross Eating. I do some up in Marysville and some of it, like a lot of dog trainers will have me come out and speak to their clients about feeding their dogs a raw food diet. I'm also going to start offering um, recipe cards that are completely balanced because that's a concern with my readers is how to do that. This, understand how your income fluctuates. So, there are people who do their business on a calendar year. That makes sense to me. Then there are the people who do it on a fiscal year. So it's July to June. And what I learned this year is that a lot of pet businesses do their business on a fiscal year. So in about August, September, everyone stops paying for advertising because they're trying to figure out what they're going to do. And my income drops drastically because of that. And by drastically, about I lost about $1,000 to $1,500 a month on advertising. So not the end of the year, but if I were working this full time and not prepared for it, it would have freaked the hell out of me, especially after losing Amazon. So take the time to pay attention, God bless you, pay attention to your traffic over a 12 month period. Get to know the Google algorithm changes. What I found is that on August 1st, Google did a medic update, which impacted all health blogs and websites. And not just all health blogs and websites, but those that promoted natural health. And my traffic, I lost 2,000 um, page views a month. Compared to a lot of the bigger sites out there, it's not a big deal. But that is another reason why my income dropped, is because I lost, I went from making $200 a day in advertising to making $100 a day in advertising. It's a huge, huge difference. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to your, how your income grows 
and falls. That way, you can cover it. You can save money in the high months. You can be a little frugal in the low months. Or you can make plans for advertising campaigns during the low months. Those are the type of things you want to keep thinking about. That right there just shows you the little drop. But overall, my traffic is pretty okay. And then that below is just showing you that close to 80% of my traffic is um, organic traffic, just people who are Googling something and they come across my site. And so knowing these things helps me plan for how I'm going to um, schedule campaigns, how I'm going to monetize, all of that. <coughs> so you can track your income using a spreadsheet. I started out that way. I used just Google Sheets. But I have since gone to QuickBooks, which is a much easier way to do it, because now when the year is over, I can just send my QuickBooks off to my CPA and he can do my taxes. Take the time to learn why your income increases and decreases. So increases are great, and I love them, but I need to know why I, that happens so I can redo, I can do it again. If my increase drops, I need to understand why that happens so I can avoid that in the future. When my in income decreased in August, in, well, September is when I saw it, I was on the phone with people trying to understand what was happening. Since I work with an advertising company and they have a vested interest in my traffic, they were on top of it as well. But as far as they were concerned, I was doing great. But I found out later about the, um, the medic update. If you're not confident with SEO, you need to work with someone. I love SEO. I think it's fun, but I don't know everything about SEO. But SEO is so very important. You do not want to do this and get involved in this and quit your job and be working full time and not understand why your blog does what it does. And then finally, and this is not finally, I'm just saying that because I say that all the time, you need to promote your blog. <laughs> so, this is how I promote my blog. I go crazy, and keep in mind, I work a full-time job still, but this is, it's so important to take advantage of all the things that are out there. It's easy to sit there and just, oh, okay, I'm just gonna write a blog post, I'm gonna publish it, I'm gonna share it on Facebook. But I also take my blog posts and I turn them into videos. There are programs that allow you to easily do that. There are programs that will follow your RSS feed and allow you, and it will import your content and help you get started on a video. So that then you can then edit it up and then upload it to Facebook, upload it to YouTube. You can create graphics. I actually think it's, you know, I, I'm gonna tell you about it later, but I hired a graphic artist, a student as an intern to help me create graphics for my site. You, there's all of these wonderful, wonderful things that you can do, but you've got to promote, promote, promote. I'm gonna give you one trick, um, tip that I did not add on the slides. A site called Missing Letter. So missing, but letter without the last E, L-E-T-T-R. Missing Letter will just basically import your RSS feed. It sets up shares for a 365 day period, so it's not every day but I think it's like six to nine shares that is going to be over a year. And it makes it so easy to go in and schedule out your shares, and boom, that's one less thing that you have to deal with. Super easy to do. And if you're lucky and can find someone to do it for you, please let me know, because I have not found anyone that knows how to use a missing letter. Oops. Treat your blog like a business. This is a big mistake that I see so many bloggers making, where I will go to events, and bloggers are dressed like they are tourists in Florida. And no one will take you seriously. Each summer I go to um, a trade show called Super Zoom in Las Vegas. And um, you would think that, oh my gosh, you're gonna be in Las Vegas for a week. That's gonna be fun. Yeah, for that trip, I actually go shopping for the trip, but I mostly go shopping because that's fun. <laughs> And then I plan out my clothes for the entire event because I have meetings to go to with brands, I have events to go to, I have all, I actually was on the news when I was in Vegas this past year. So I have a, a very particular outfits and I dress based in corporate casual, I would call it. I do not go to Vegas wearing, I always wear dark jeans because um, dark jeans seem to look nicer than light jeans, never wear ripped jeans. But the reason why is because I am walking around. I'm actually just supposed to be there to report on SuperZoo. I'm not really there to have people say, hey, I want to hire you to promote my products. But that does happen. And the reason why it does happen is because I look like a person who knows what I'm doing. 
If I walked around Super Zoo wearing ripped jeans and a t-shirt with a big old kitty on it and maybe a backwards baseball cap, no one is going to trust me with their money. I need to look like someone that is trustworthy, that's a business person. So treat your blog like a business. So I have a home office. We are still practicing on understanding what office hours look like in our house. But we're going to get there. You know? My boyfriend one day, I was on the phone with a brand, and he came to me and said, hey, I need your help real quick. And I'm like, do you really need my help? Yes. And I'm like, do you really need my help? Yes. So I go, okay, let me call you right back. I'm so sorry. No problem. I go outside, and he's like fixing a bicycle. He says, put your finger here. <laughs> and I'm just like, what have you been kidding me? And that's when we had to get started at work, understanding when I am sitting at this desk, I am at work. And he will say, but you are in your pajamas. It doesn't matter. I'm at work right now. You cannot interrupt me. So get a home office and have everyone understand that these are work hours. You know, make sure you set aside me time. It's easy to get really super stoked and do all of this, especially after an event like WordCamp. And I'm going to do all these things, I'm going to do it, and then all of a sudden you're completely and other overly whelmed and burned out. Do not allow yourself to do that. Treat it like have a weekend. I sometimes have a day or two, and it's hard. I feel guilty because I can be doing stuff. But I will not touch my blog. I allow myself to just watch. Real Housewives, um, all the cities are on right now, except for New York, it's so great. Um, maintain an editorial calendar. I meant to have that out for you, but I am old school. I have to have a paper calendar so I can look at the entire calendar and make plans of what I'm going to do. It's so important to me to be able to be organized and know every single day what I need to do. And the reason why is because I have so much on my plate right now that it's easy to become overwhelmed and then before you know it, Two weeks have gone by and you haven't done anything. I have Black Friday and Cyber Monday are coming up. I have to be planned for that. And so that's what I did yesterday. I took the day off. And I planned for Black Friday and Cyber Monday by creating a new marketing funnel. You need to track your income ex and expenses. You need to hire a CPA unless you're an accountant. I'm an accountant. I don't do my taxes. I don't know how to do business taxes. I know how to do personal taxes, but my blog is not a person. So, I have a CPA, I have an attorney as well. My blog name is trademarked. I am an S Corp now. I have no idea what that means, but my CPA said that it was really important that I be an S Corp, so now I'm an S Corp. I said, I sound like I said escort. That's not what I said. <laughs> <laughs> And then take advantage of these networking opportunities because these are the things that you're going to need to get help. The marketing consultant that I work with on my blog, I got because I network. And I know it's hard. And I'm going to put something in here. These are the ways you can network. But hey, most of us are introverts. I know it may seem like I'm an extrovert because look at me. I'm smiling. I'm talking. I'm happy. But I am going to sleep like the dead tonight. And when I wake up tomorrow morning, I'm going to be like, I'm not. That's horrible. I'm going to be exhausted. When you see me tomorrow morning, I'm going to be a zombie because it takes all the energy out of me. After a word camp or after a super zoom, I sleep for an entire day where I just don't do anything. It's horrible. But you have to, you know, take breaks for yourself. Find a quiet place to hide and be so you can have a time to yourself. You also want to um, get to know people's names. I don't know about you guys, but I suck. I suck at people's names, and I'm looking down, looking for my, um, it's over there. But I look around, and when people's tags are flipped over, it's like, I'm, you are, and you're saying hi to me. I don't remember your name, I'm sorry. I'm good at faces, I know I knew you, I know I saw you somewhere, but I will never, ever remember your names. And repeating a name three times does not work. I'm still figuring out, but you know, one day I'll get there. But networking is important. So, I do not know how much time I have, but I wanted to make sure I had plenty of time for questions. So these are my resources. These slides are available. Um, there is a, are you guys done taking a picture of that? So I'm gonna. So there's the slides right there. WCC SEA 2018. So please ask me questions. Yes, please. Um, do you have any tips for non-analytical people to like interpret Google Analytics? Because I just look at it and I'm like, okay. Like, what am I looking at? I don't know. <laughs> no, 
I totally understand, and that's where I was too, and I'm a numbers person. But what I did is, I mean, there are services you can use that make it easier, or supposedly make it easier. I just feel like it's Google Analytics in a different package. I'm not learning anything. So what I finally did was just sit down and focus on one section of Google Analytics. And I, I focused on um, the posts that people were visiting the most and getting an understanding of what about these posts were making people visit my site. And that's actually when I really started monetizing was because I went and looked at those posts to figure out what's so special about them and noticed, oh, there's a lot of you know, errors in this site. And then, wow, there's an opportunity for me to monetize. I monetized my first blog post. Um, it was five alternatives to rawhide shoes for dogs. And the next month, I made 50 bucks. And that was like, what? And so I went through that entire list. I think it was like 10 or 15. And I did the same thing for each post. I cleaned it up. I optimized it. And then I monetized it. And then I slowly started going through that way. So just start with a section. Instead of trying to take it all in at once, start with a section of it and become really good at understanding what's happening there. And then do another section. And don't try and do all of this in the next month. It took me years to get here. And I know it sounds discouraging, but if you have a day job, be grateful for that day job because that day job is allowing you to take the time you need to learn everything that you need to learn. Today, I, don't, I still don't know everything about my Google Analytics, but I know a lot more than I did in the beginning. Another thing I do is, let's go back. I use a second site called Clicky. I do two different analytics programs. I do the Clicky is a premium program, so I pay for it every year. And the reason why I have two is because, one, Google Analytics is free, and there is no customer service for Google Analytics. I need sometimes to talk to somebody. So if Google Analytics is doing something wonky, I want to, before I freak out, go and check if the same thing is happening over on Clicky.com. If, if it's happening on Clicky, then okay, then this is real. If it's just happening on Google Analytics, then it's like, you know, I need to dig a little deeper and figure out what's going on. Fortunately for me, both of them have tracked with each other and I haven't had a problem. Yes? What's the name of the program that you're in your video? Yay! Yeah, the video PC one. Yes, um, one is called L-U-M-E-N-5. Absolutely. What are the programs that will help you turn your RSS feed into videos? Lumen 5 is one. It's not perfect, but it's great. What it does is it, it will... Um, give you a bunch of slides with words on them that are directly from your blog post. It'll give you the images. It won't take images from your site. It has its own stock images. And then you can go in and edit and create it. You can add music to it. Um, I believe you can do a voiceover if you want to. But it's super quick and easy to do. But I prefer Animoto. Now, Animoto will not take your RSS feed, but it's crazy fast and easy. In fact, yesterday I made three videos with Animoto. It's super easy to do, and those videos look amazing. I mean, people think that they're professionally done. And so that is, I believe, do I have that on here? Mm. I, saw it. You I, do saw it. I do not. Animoto is a, gosh, I thought I had it on here, but I guess not. A-N-I-M-O-T-O, Animoto. Yes. Yes. Sponsored uh, blog posts. Do you charge? I mean, have, do you charge a flat rate, and do you keep them up for like the whole time? Do they expire? Because it just seems like you know you charge a flat rate, and then you're you're you know if you leave it up, it seems like they're getting a pretty good deal on, on that kind of stuff. You know? They actually are. So his question is, um, how do I charge for sponsored posts? I do charge a flat rate. My sponsored posts are really in depth. And so the reason why I don't mind charging a flat rate and just leaving it that way is one, I'm making income on my traffic. And so my traffic is monetized through the advertising revenue. But I write a sponsor post not in a like, hey, look at this brand, they are awesome. I always weave it into a story about me and my dogs so that it has legs. And that just means that this is going to be a valuable post for years to come. And so it's always going to attract traffic. So that's benefiting me. And that's going to add to my advertising income. So I don't mind doing that. One thing that I will do is because I have advertising income, for month, one month, I'll leave that post ad-free. So they don't have to compete 
with their competitors' ads showing up on a sponsor post that they paid for. It's just going to be one blank post, and then I'm done. And then you turn the ads back on. Mm -hmm. Turn the ads back on. Okay. That's Monetize that traffic. Wrong there. Okay. Yes. Do you spend any money on Facebook or Instagram advertising for your posts, or do you build that cost into what you charge for posts? Okay. Do I spend money on Facebook or Instagram ads? I do pay for um, Facebook ads, but they are like campaigns only. I will not pay for a Facebook ad campaign for a sponsor post. Um, I feel like my my traffic and my audience is enough. And one thing that I do is like with, for instance, if I do a sponsored post for, you know, name a product, um, apples. I've got some apples, so they want me to promote those apples because no one knows about apples. I'm going to write a blog post about the benefits of apples for dogs. I'm also going to do a video about the benefits of apples for dogs. I might even do a video going, hey, guess what, guys? These guys just sent me these great apples. Look at how shiny they are. In a few weeks, there's going to be a blog post just about how great these apples are. But all of this stuff ultimately benefits me. And that's who my um, people who come to me for sponsored posts, they're actually not looking to, they can pay for their own Facebook advertising if they're looking to spread awareness of their apples. What they want to do is for me to tell my audience about apples. I don't have to do Facebook advertising to reach my followers on Facebook. And um, Instagram, I treat Instagram as a, here's a pretty picture of my dog's meal and leave it at that, simply because I only have so much time and I like to spend most of my social media time on Facebook and YouTube. Yes? If, if you could go back to the beginning, knowing what you know now, the first 500 or 1,000 subscribers, what would you do different? Oh my gosh, what would I do if I can go back to the beginning? And that is stop being afraid of email marketing. I was terrified of it. I was really afraid not only of email marketing, but of advertising as well. I quickly gained a lot of traffic because I was so alone in this niche. And I didn't monetize it at all. I didn't take it, I didn't know how to. I didn't want to annoy people. And I didn't know what I was doing. I had so many people telling me, why are you still working full time with that type of traffic? And I was just like, I don't know. I did not know. But there was all of that information out there. And I would hear about it. But I didn't know how to do it, and I was kind of afraid to do it. I wish I would have reached out and gotten the help that I needed a long time ago. Yes? So keyword research can be kind of tough with like a real niche and niche. Do you have any tips for how to come up with topics and how to optimize those and that sort of thing? Gosh, I really thought I had that on here. But, oh, it is right there, Hoth Keyword. I learned that from Amy right here. <laughs> I have a word um, a WordPress meetup group called it's a DIY meetup group and Amy was kind enough to come and talk to our group about SEO. But those are the type of things that I use. I also do things like I don't use a whole Google Google Google, Google keyword um, tool. I just type in and see what comes up. If I'm going to search for this, what comes up? And I go and I look at what is ranking high, and then I try and use those type of keywords. I mean, and it's just, it's not, it's funny because I know a lot of people put a lot of time and money into keyword research. I never really have. I've been pretty fortunate and lucky about it. And also it helps because I'm very involved in the raw feeding community, so I know how we all talk. And many of my blog posts, like many of them are about my own personal life and what I'm learning, but also it's about the questions that I'm getting from my readers. So I have the keywords right there in the email that they sent to me. Yes? So how much time do you work in your day job still, and how much time do you, I mean, you could be super, super busy. I am super, super busy. How much time do I work in the day, and how much time do I work on my blog? My day job is a 40-hour-a-week job. My blog is probably a 30-hour-a-week job. I am a superhero. I have about 27 to 28 hours in a typical day and um, I probably sleep for an hour and a half every day. <laughs> so if you guys can't do that, then you're going to just shut up. <laughs> yes? So, Part of it, did your blog get posted to off different social media sites at the same time? Um, no, I actually mostly post to Facebook. Creepy, creepy. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, do I post my blogs to different social media sites? I used to post like to LinkedIn and to Twitter and to Facebook, but one, it's just sort of like my audience isn't on Twitter. So I was just spamming Twitter because I wasn't spending any time over there. If anyone had a question about something I shared, 
they were, you know, I wasn't going to see it because I wasn't over on Twitter. I was on Facebook. I have, I'm in groups. I have my pages. Um, I have my profile. So I do everything on Facebook. And then I take my blog post, and this is a session that Bob Dunn is doing, I believe, after this one, where you can convert that blog post into different types of media. And that's basically what I do. I turn them into videos. I turn them into graphics. Um, I use them on my mailing list. I do all of that. Sometimes I will, like, Facebook has notes. Last weekend I was at a conference, and so I was blogging in Facebook notes. And then I'll take those notes eventually and use them to update and create new blog posts on my site and then videos and so on and so forth. So that is what's worked best for me, is find the social media sites that work for you. A lot of times people feel like they have to be on every single one of them. You'll end up spinning your wheels. Don't do that. Do Go where your audience is and then you know, talk to them there. Yes? How often do you email your Ah, how often do I email subscribers? Every Tuesday. I do it once a week, except when they first join my list, they get a follow-up series um, of three emails. And it's just sort of like, hey, thanks for joining. My name is Kimberly. This is what I'm all about. And the second one is like, hey, here's some great information for you. Yes, thanks again for joining. You're going to get one more email. The last email is like, hey, buy my book. <laughs> and then, then they go on a regular um, weekly. Um, email. Yes? Do you uh, email them on Facebook? I mean, I'm finding myself using, looking at my Yahoo less and less all the time, like, because my friends just send me messages on Facebook. So, so um, how, like, how do I respond to, or how do people reach me? You, yeah, or how do you, do you ever, like, send out ma mailing on Facebook to, like, Facebook? Do I use the Facebook Messenger for my email list? No. I actually think that that is atrocious. And maybe I'll change my mind in a year or two, but it drives me crazy when I accidentally end up clicking something and it means that someone's going to start emailing me via Messenger. Um, I am kind of popular in the blogging space, the pet, uh, not blogging space, but the pet rock eating world. I get so many messages via Messenger, via email, everything that I can barely keep up with it. And I can't have people sending me random stuff that I don't need, so I don't want to do that to people. I find that email, and I use Gmail, and then people do message me via Messenger, and I email, I message them back. But I try not to use that service. And another reason why I don't want to use it is if Facebook goes away, then I just lost a valuable thing. I want my list to be mine, not Facebook's. And I'm worried that Facebook might just go away. I don't know. Anyone else? Yes? Do you use an email service provider? Do I use an email service? I use... Um, Aweber? Aweber. I just switched to Aweber. I was with MailChimp for a really long time. I use Aweber and I just started using Lead Pages. <clears throat> And um, I didn't want to have to do it. I know I, I use Divi as my, um, that's my um, thing for my blog. And Divi can, allows you to do uh, landing pages and things like that. Uh, I just didn't like the way um, the sign-up pages looked. They weren't as glossy and pretty. And so I went with lead pages. I figured that, you know, it's hard to spend money. And this is something that I should have said. Be wary about jumping dropping, dumping a lot of money into different things. It's easy to get excited about something and give someone a few hundred dollars thinking that it's going to change everything and it changes nothing or you end up not using it. Don't waste money that way. Really take the time and, you know, educate yourself, ask people questions. Before I went with Lee Pages, I talked to everybody about what my options were. I could have done the same thing for free, but it wouldn't have looked as nice. And so my thought was that I'll go ahead and pay for a service that looks great and then my list will pay for that, and then I don't have to worry about it. But just really be careful about what you want to spend money on. It's easy, so easy, to get people to um, talk you into paying, paying for their service. That'll teach you how to monetize their blog. You don't need that. All the information is out there. You just got to take the time and go and find it. Yes, five minutes. I got five minutes, you guys. Yes. Also, 
You know what? I stopped using MailChimp because MailChimp became too expensive for what I was using it for, which was basically nothing. And um, so I switched to Aweber. And the reason why I switched to Aweber is because they reached out to me and said, hey, if you want to come and join us, we'll give you a month for free and we'll teach you how to use it. And they did. They have been, I actually have a person um, at Aweber that emails me each month to see how I'm going. They check how my emails go and they contact me and say, hey, that last email you did, did this well, you had this meeting open, da 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 You know, here's an idea for you. Why don't you start doing this? They are amazing. And so I was, yeah, someone, I could have gone to even another one, but I'm really happy with their customer service. And I don't know if this is normal or if it will last, but I'm happy right now. So I'm going to stick with them. And it's, they're super easy to use. Yes? How big is your list? How big is my list? My list is very small. I left, I left um, a list of over 5,000 on MailChimp, and now I have a list of about 1,000 right now. I just started it on Aweber. You can't transfer. Yeah. I don't want it. I didn't want to take my list with me because I don't trust that those people join the list for the same reasons. I want to to build this list through my funnels, and I want to know exactly like that these because I have three lists. I want to know that these people join this list because they're brand new to raw feeding, and these people join this list because they want to know about how to save money on raw feeding, and these people join this list because ugh, they got a, they want a giveaway and they want to win something and that I know how to deal with each of those lists. Also, I didn't want to have a bunch of people add it to this new list and then I start emailing all the time and then they just all unsubscribe or hit spam or something. I want people knowing exactly what they're getting into. Yes? On that note, did you, even though you didn't have the uh, save that list, did you send one final email saying, hey, I'm leaving the service. Yep. If you want to stick with me, be subscribe. So he's asking, did I warn the people in my own list that I was leaving? And yes, I did. I, I posted all about it, reminded people. I sent people two reminder emails to say, hey, this is the last email that you're going to get. If you still want to follow me, here is the link. And yes? Oh, uh, just how about you should ask people about monetizing and stuff. Uh, can you explain what has been the best thing for you for monetizing? I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure you covered it already, but. Yeah. Um, so the best way, so I'm going to just say, the best ways to monetize my blog have been the most profitable ways. Number one is the advertising. I do advertising through Mediavine, and it is fantastic. That company is amazing. They have, are, they have a vested interest in me making money because when I make money, they make money. And the, the resources that they have for bloggers, they have a group, they have, you can talk to them. I mean, it, I am blown away. And... Because I have a natural focused blog, I don't need science diet ads showing up on my raw feeding blogs. Mm -hmm. But if I go through and say, hey, no more kibble ads, that's going to cut into my revenue. So they worked with me to find a way to deliver the most amount of ads so I can make the most money without sacrificing my message. I mean, ultimately, with ads, it's if you're visiting my site, it's going to be your search history that drives the ads that show up on my site. But I still want to be able to control some of the content that's showing up on my site, and they have been amazing about it. Um, the second one is affiliate marketing. I belong to several um, affiliate marketing programs. I'm very particular about what I will join because I only promote the products that I use or have used or believe in with my dogs to my audience. And that's because if they have questions, I can answer those questions. And so, and it makes it just so much easier, but that is my second money maker. And then after that would be the sponsored posts and the sponsorships. So I think one more question. One more question, please. So how do you take lead pages and integrate that into your uses with WordPress? It always seems like, why not just WordPress? Or why not just lead pages and lead pages doesn't have a good URL, and I think my brain goes weird. Um, so how do I um, integrate lead pages in my WordPress website? There is a plugin, and so um, and that helped me integrate it into my WordPress website. And the reason why I went with lead pages and not just WordPress is because it just didn't look nice. I've seen other sites that are collecting emails, you know, in exchange for um, like here's a guide to help you do this, and it looks so nice. When I was just doing it with WordPress. It just looked awful because they would be on my site and they click a link and they're taken off my site to this 
really weird page where they have to put in their email address and it's not clear if it's mine or not and I couldn't figure out how to make that look nice and then that took them to another page. When I just integrated lead pages into my website, they just entered everything into my website and that was it. And it was just so nice and easy. So that's what I ended up doing. Yes. Do you have an, do you have an incentive for uh the for, email, like, I mean, do they get a guide or... Yes, like I do have incentives for emails. What I do is I just take a... And the best incentives i found are my list posts. So 22 ways to save money on raw feeding. Boom, that becomes... I just turn it into a slide share like this, export it into a PDF, and, and give it to them. I save it into Google Docs, and then have that link so people can go and get it that way. The easiest thing to do. So, thank you so much.